I don't use my favourite toy enough, the Land Rover Defender. I need to put some love in the project, give me reasons to take it to somewhere adventurous, where it's meant to be, and I've decided to design and build a whole lot of adventure kit to enhance the experience. The first problem I've got to get over is cooking in the Defender, and I'll show you what problems I've got after I've got rid of this freeloading fly that's just landed in my tea. As you've just seen, I normally cook here in the entrance, but the trouble with that is it blocks the way. I can't get in and out when I'm cooking. And I did tour with the idea of having it on the back of the door, here. But same problem, it blocks the passageway into the back of the vehicle. The wing of the car, it's a bit compressed and it's too high. I end up boiling my eyebrows, just peering in the top of the pot. It's always sat on the floor. Not particularly comfortable. I don't know many professional chefs that cook sat on the floor. And if the grass is wet, you end up adopting this French campsite toilet pose. If you've been, you'll know what I mean. Now most of the time the jet bowled into the back of my Land Rover. Faithful friend that has endlessly bowled water for me for about 10 years and it's fantastic at doing that. But I'll probably need to do a bit more than just boiling water when I'm out for a few days at a go. The Tranger. I've had this for years. Tranger has been around a very long time and it's got one or two problems, but I can't quite make my mind up. So what I'm going to do is a comparison between the two cooking systems, a few tests like a drag race to see which boils the water fastest, and a couple of other comparisons to see which one I'm going to use in future adventures in the Defender. The jet bowl is compact, simple and lightweight, and the cup can boil about a pint. And that's about it. I once tried to warm some beans up in the pot, and they burnt so bad to the bottom, that by the time I chipped the carbon off, it had also taken the anodization off the aluminium. Now the Trangia is a lot more versatile. The non-stick pans, kettle and fantastic windshield, its simple design and reliability are the reason why it's been around unchanged for decades. But it is a bit bulky and heavy. When I'm not backpacking this thing, it's getting carried around in the back of my Defender and I'm fairly confident the Defender is capable of carrying the weight of a Tranger. So here we go, one pint of water, one jet boil, I give up. My life's just too short to wait for a tranger to boil a pint of water. I've used transers for years. I was using them in the 1980s on my D of E trip. And I do like them. They are quite compact and all the kits contained. But my main beef with them is this bit here, the alcohol burner. It's slow, geologically slow, absolutely fine in a Thai restaurant for burning the bottom of your red curry and keeping the top loop warm. But if you're in a hurry for a cup of tea, the jet ball beats it every time. Until, out with the alcohol, in with the gas. This gas convert is a game changer. I have used it and it's fast. And I've got a sneaky feeling it's significantly faster than this. So let's put a stopwatch on it and see if I'm right.
So I've made my decision. It's the gas powered Tranger. Versatility and power, and with the alcohol as a backup option, I think it's pretty well covered. I'm gonna make a simple aluminium frame that fixes to the ladder, has some fold down shelves, and we can fit this Tranger in securely. I don't run the risk of knocking it over, which was always the risk I have with a jet ball. I'd be forever worried that I would do this to it and have a horrible scolding accident. So that's it, decision made, specification sorted. I'm gonna get back to the workshop, start cutting some metal, start doing some filming. So don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see what's next. I hope this is worth it, but adventures usually are.